What do you guys think? The new emu house. Come on, let's check it out. Good morning. And not to do the chores today, we've got, I got a busy day. I gotta get the emu house done today or at least as close as possible. Cause this is the week more emus will be hatching out and it would be fun to get bamboo moved over. Speaking of bamboo, let's say hi to her this morning. What's going on bamboo? Hey, you're not gonna say hi to me? You're not gonna say hi to me? Come here. Come here. Come here. She loves to come up and snuggle. All right, you ready to run around with me? Let's go run around and do some chores, huh? She has now been outside for a week. She's been getting very friendly with the cats. And she likes their food. She comes and drinks from their water. This is typically how it goes. She'll follow me around. I'll go into the chicken yard and then she'll try to find a way into the fence. So I usually have to pick her up or over or let her in through the bottom. You eat the chicken food now? If she can start to eat this, this is, these are the layer pellets that we get from Valley Feed down in Kansas City. As soon as she can start to eat these and hold this down, they have a special feed just for emus. Can you help me open the door? Let's go let the chickens out. Blue, our peacock back there, and you can tell he's always hiding from me when I'm out here. Where are you going, bud? So I'm gonna go inside, get a little cleaned up, and get out here and start working on this emu house. It's growing so far. Let's see. Looks like we got a yellow pepper, Amish paste with tomatoes, chocolate striped tomatoes, Basil. Anything growing over here? here? Look at these. These cabbages. They're really taking off. You did those the same day? Yeah. One little chive. This is thyme. How long do they go until you put them in the garden? I don't know when I'm going to feel safe. Last year we put them in the garden and then it froze. So, but I don't know if we're going to get that last frost again this year. So I'll just kind of see how it goes. So right now we are standing inside the brand new emu house, the, the home of bamboo and any future emus that we hatch out. Isn't that right? Bamboo just turned two months old today. Happy birthday, Bamboo. Sort of. All right, so this project has taken us about three weeks from start to finish. I started this a couple weeks ago by getting it framed up. I was initially gonna start with an L shape where I was gonna have this be the back wall, have it come out, and then have there basically be like a little corner that they could go be secluded in and then come out. Turned out to be a little too complicated. I nixed that in place of what we've got now, which is a smaller back, going to a bigger front uh, that's got a peaked roof, going to a shallow back. Come on in. Hurry up. Jump. <laughs> got it. So once we got this framed up, we actually put some pallets here on the back. We broke apart about six pallets, and that got me a good start on the back and on the front. The next thing we worked on was the roof, or not the all the roof, but the, the support. We've got 
uh, plywood up here and we've got some support beams to support all of the roof and that really helped with the structure because after the first couple days this was struggling a little bit as far as staying upright but now i am positive this thing is not going anywhere along with working on the roof then we began to work on windows we wanted there to be a couple spots where the emus could see in and out where they could get some sunlight even if they were closed in at night and in the morning and they wouldn't go as crazy in there with it being really dark and the cool thing about these windows is we put some little latches down here and so these windows open up so we'll put some type of board right behind here and that will allow the emus to be able to get some airflow in there and then we might even hang some feeder. Uh, I've seen like the little horse trough feeders. That we can either hang on the inside or the outside that they can eat from. That'll be a lot of fun. And then that'll protect it from the weather. To be able to finish the siding on each of these sides by the windows and then to start working on the front, I had to break apart more pallets. I think all in all, I broke apart about 12 or 13 pallets. And with pallet wood, it's a little gappy sometimes. Wherever there were some holes, we got some other boards to close up all those holes. There's just a couple little tiny gaps that we'll, we'll continue to go over as I break apart some more pallets and we'll close up all those little cracks right there. So initially, there'll be a little bit of airflow, maybe a little bit of water getting in but we're gonna make sure we clean that completely up. So these doors were big, heavy beasts. We took them out of some pretty thick plywood. We put in some really cool handles so that way we could open it and then that we could open it from the inside so we're never locked in there. So what do you think of these doors, hon? I think they're pretty cool. So initially we just had it as plywood. We had a little discussion about whether it was too plain. I didn't really like it with just the plywood. So we end up coming to an agreement. If I made it barn door style, that you'd be cool with that. Yeah. So we end up finding some pallet woods that matched and made some cool little designs here on each of the doors. And with doing that, initially these doors opened all the way and I could hook it right up against the door. Now because of this wood there, I can't get it all the way. So we had to improvise and go buy some of these big latches and hook it right there. And then now the doors stay open. All right, so now the emu house was about 90% completed. The structure was there, had the roof, but we didn't have any shingles. And I've never roofed anything before. I've never put shingles on anything before. So it was a lot of fun getting to do that for the first time. I think it turned out pretty good. So the last thing we need to do is to furnish this house. We'll get some food and water, different things like that in here, but we also need your help. We've got a couple spots here that are pretty plain and we'd love to have some artwork or some signage to show that it's Bamboo's house and then whoever else ends up living here with Bamboo. So what do we need from you? If you guys want to make some designs, like this is about three and a half feet wide. So something maybe about two feet wide, maybe about a foot, foot and a half tall that would have something about bamboo on there. And then we'll save a spot. We'll have a spot on the other side for whoever else lives in here. We'll pick our favorite one and we'll put it on the outside. But then we've got other spots. We've got the inside of these doors that'll be open. And then we've also got all around here that we can put different signage in here. If it's just White House on the Hill artwork and it's on some wood, we can absolutely put it in here uh, for some artwork for the emus to enjoy. So we'd love to see what you guys can come up with and show off some of your artwork out here. So Becky, we currently have bamboo living in the chicken tractor and we just found out we've got something on the way today that's gonna take the place in that chicken tractor. You ordered some meat birds. I kind of forgot that we had done this at the beginning of the year. We actually ordered some meat birds from McMurray Hatchery. They just happened to show up at the post office today and uh, Becky's gonna go get those for us and then we'll find them a home in our chicken tractor where bamboo is living. All right, so McMurray sent us 21 of the Cornish crossed. We had 20 and then they threw in an extra. And these were supposed to get to full size in about six to eight weeks. And we've got 21, 20 and one extra of these Murray Big Red Broilers. And they say it's an updated version of the Freedom Ranger, the Red Ranger. And it's supposed to get to full size in about eight weeks, which the old version 
Got the full size in about 12 weeks. So we'll see how they do against the Cornish Cross. One of the cool things McMurray always does is they send you a free rare chick or at least an extra chick uh, in with your order just for fun. And so look what we got. Can you guess what it is? My guess is the Polish. Yeah, I think it's the, I think the white crested Polish, I believe. He's got eye black under the eye. What do you think, buddy? You excited? Yes, because they pick me a lot. They pick you a lot? Yeah. So fuzzy. Hey, we're going to get them out and we're going to dip their beak in the water and dip it in the food to make sure they know where the food and water is, okay? Okay. All right. Hang on. One at a time. Alright, well thank you so much McMurray Hatchery for sending these chicks. We've got 43 great looking chicks here. Some Cornish Cross, some Murray red broilers, and a little Polish chick. Here, you want me to put them all on top of you? Yeah, yeah. you want me to do that? Yeah, yeah. Cause that would be fun. Do that. So Uriah wants to be bathed in, in chicks, so we'll of course have to go give him a bath after this. Let's see how many chicks we can get on top of them here. I can get, let's see, I got four on there. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Bathing chicks, what do you think? All right, we got a bunch of mail from you guys. We wanted to check this out here real quick. This is from Jacob in Wisconsin. So Jacob wants some chickens, drew us a White House on the Hill. Jacob's parents, please get him some chickens. All right, Angela from Florida sent us a couple books. The Chicken Who Loved Books. Oh, and Angela wrote it. How cool is that? We'll check that out. And The Tale of Three Trees. So Angela wrote both these books. We're gonna check them out and let you know what we think about them. Singapore. Daniel from Singapore, holy smokes. Little leather chicks on keychains. How fun is that? Thank you so much, Daniel. Oh, for paintings. That's a blue, and that one is baby bamboo. These are beautiful. We'll definitely have to frame these. Thank you so much. So we posted these the other day on our Instagram or Instagram <coughs> stories. And if you want to check her out on there, it's at Jillian Loray Illustration. Thank you so much, Jillian. And, and Lily sent us, I think these are little animal stickers, horses and cows. And she sent us a picture of Tegan, her rednecker, which is a combination, she says, of Rhode Island Reds and Dominique. And Cian at Farmhouse Tea, St. Fiacra's Farm, sent us some more tea. Right now we do have the Pinky Emu Tea and the Mr. Blue's Earl Grey Tea are available on her site. Farmer's Market Strawberry, Three Sisters Kombucha Blend, High Desert Hibiscus, and Mossy Rock Kombucha Blend. And thank you, CN, for sending those to us. And we'll have a link down in the description if you wanna check this out. Well, as many of you guys may know, it is really close to hatching day. It is day 52 on our way to hatching a couple more emus. And she hatched on day 53. So hopefully in the next video, we've got something fun to show you. Hope you guys have a great night. We'll see you next time.